talking about it, that someone that's a widow, and that will represent that which does not seem to be the source of blessing. But to receive that, God said, you must be willing to go through. You must be willing to go through Zarephath. You go through Zarephath, there's a widow who's on assignment to bless me. Watch this. Watch this, somebody. Now, the widow will be in the crowd. But you'll never recognize the widow on your best day. See, somebody, not everybody, somebody has been sent by God to be a blessing in your life. Not everybody, but somebody. You will never recognize that somebody who's been sent by God through the lens of your humanity. God says it's going to be like a crowd of people in Times Square, New York. People on every show. It's going to be like New Year's Eve in the French Quarter of New Orleans. Shoulder to shoulder, people everywhere. You don't know who's who. The crowds are so great. And trying to find the person that's been sent by God, that widow, to be a blessing in your life. It's like looking for a needle in a haystack if you look for your humanity. So here's what I want you to know. God will and has already designed a special one-on-one -on -one encounter. And that one-on-one -on -one encounter will take place as you move through your spiritual passages of each day. Amen. See, the woman and Elijah, they only came together because Elijah left Zarephath, now watch this, 100 mile journey. Now, this lady did not live at the gate of Stephen. Now, I don't know if she had been there 15 minutes. I don't know if she had been there an hour. But I know just by reading the nature of the context, she wasn't there all day long. She wasn't there all week long because she had a son at home. And she had come to the gate just to pick up a little something so that she could go back and have this final meal with her son. Now, she believed she was dying. She believed her son was dying. And she wanted to have that intimate mo moment with her son. So do you think, if she believed she was dying, and she believed her son was dying, do you think she would leave her son at home while she go hang out at the gate? Do you think that makes sense? That makes sense to me. But what does make sense is that she would make a quick run to the grocery store, the gate, to get what she needed to get from the city. I wish I could teach a little bit. You know that's a blessing in the city. Amen. Oh, we'll teach that next time. All right. So, but I believe she went to the gate to get a blessing. And I'm just going to argue in my spiritual being. And I wasn't that. But I'm going to give her an hour and a half. How about that? I'm going to give her an hour and a half. But now, I know Elijah. Watch this. Y'all want to give her five hours? We'll give her five hours. Know. We'll give her five hours. Well, watch this. At the same time, Elijah had to travel a hundred miles. Now, on a good day, in biblical times, you could travel about 20 miles a day. You know, if you were real strong and hearty, maybe 25 miles a day. So we're talking about this is a journey that's a minimum of what? Four days. But given the drought, given the situation, it could have been five, six, seven days. And now he, he meets this specific widow who's designed by God to be a specific blessing in his life. That means he had to get to the gate at a certain time. I wonder if he had 10 minutes to spare. I wonder if she had just gotten there. See, it's not even that she was at the gate. That's not the power and the miracle in and of itself. Many hungry people were at the gate. Many widows were at the gate. Many, but that was only one individual that God had already predestined, touched that woman's heart to be a blessing in the promised life. I want you to know that there are some member of city, members, gatherers, followers of the city vision that are not here. There are some that God has sent to be a part of this vision. And I know you don't know it, but God has already predestined. 
He's already orchestrated it in the spirit. God, the word of God says he knew us before our parents knew us. He has called some to be prophets, some to be preachers. He's called some to operate in the ministry of help. He's given us all a special gift. And, and God is gathering those in the vision and in the ministry of City of Faith Church. I want you to know that. I believe that deep in my spirit. And God is sending people to this what? This corporate anointing. Into this atmosphere of illumination and inspiration. To walk in total life victory. And to expect and experience yearly increase. I want you to know that you will meet the person that you need to meet. It's going to be in a, take this prophetic word now. It's going to be in an intimate, one-on-one -on -one like setting. It might not be one-on-one -on -one in the sense that there's no one else around. But you're going to have that brief one-on-one -on -one moment. Now, I see a lot of people, they look online for, for a mate. You don't have to look online for a mate. All you have to do is travel your spiritual journey. You pursue your spiritual journey. You be where God wants you to be, when he wants you to be there, and you're going to have a moment where you be. Amen. Just be where you're supposed to be. It could be at a job interview. It could be on your truck driving route. It could be just going to work on time at 8 o'clock or 7 o'clock. It could be a rush hour of traffic. It could be going to the grocery store. It could be the mundane task of picking up your child from an after school program or daycare program. No matter what, I just want you to know that God's blessing will find you out. Amen. See, here's what I want you to know about the blessing of God. The blessing will run you down. Amen. The blessing will hunt you down. The blessing is looking for you. You don't have to look for the blessing. I mean, the blessing is look. When's the last time children under the age of, say, 12, during Christmas season, has gone to the store and put gifts on their way? When's the last time children have done that? You know, they go to Walmart, you, you know, go to the railway lines, and you, all you see is children, five, six, seven, eight, nine years old. Have y'all been to that Walmart on the north side that's set up like that? No, you haven't seen that Walmart. Huh? It doesn't work like that. There are adults there who's on a covert mission to be a blessing in the lives of these children. My wife, during the Christmas season, sometimes I'm tired on Christmas, Christmas Eve and I want to rest. And she'll tell me, let's get up and put this stuff together. Package these gifts and put them under the tree. And I'm like, man, just, 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 just lay them on the couch. And I want you to know God doesn't simply lay your, your bountiful blessing on the couch. He's been making preparation before you were even born. Somebody shout. Amen. Come on, somebody say amen. So I want you to 